I've been looking forward to making this video, doing this over voiceover for some time, because I really enjoyed doing this painting, and I re was really pleased by the way it came out. You know, some of the simplest pieces that we work on in terms of the materials we use it comes out can come out to be some of the best that we've done because we're not thinking of a whole lot of uh, materials and and processes that go with the materials that you use over here I'm just doing a gray scale I'm just using lamp black and permanent white gouache and that's it the surface that I'm working on is Strathmore printmaking paper and um, uh, the brushes don't really matter so much. They're not like great, great brushes. They're not terrible brushes. Obviously, I wouldn't be using them. But they're not really expensive brushes. They're just a uh, um, uh, bunch of flats and some rounds. That's it. But uh, that's it. And then um, the reference that I have, I got from a site called Earth's World, which I talked about before. Great site. Guy shares his uh, photos online about... Uh, you know, just the, the photos that he took at a, a, uh, a fair, a country fair or something like that and just shot random people and, and um, all sorts of interesting looking people uh, that he shot and posted those on his website. So I can put a link to his website. It's great sources for practice. To practice. I use it generally to practice or to teach uh, as I'm doing here. So the thing that I'm shooting for is just a really, really simple, this goes along with the, um, the videos that I had done recently regarding mass drawing, right? Because here I'm not working in details. I'm not doing a, a preliminary pencil drawing. Uh, the structure is built up by following the masses of light and dark in the photograph. And this is a, you need a great photograph where you have those contrasts to work with or in life you need to have that lighting set up to have those contrasts to work with in order to in order to do something like this uh, obviously this won't work where uh, the the lighting kind of like floods the face and it kind of flattens out things over here the lighting is coming from up above which is the Sun slanting down towards um, towards our left right so it's slanting down slightly towards our left and coming from up above and it's giving like a really nice shadows that we can work with in uh, in a process like this so I'm not seeing details right now what I'm really focusing on is patterns uh, of light and dark patterns and then within those patterns the shapes that those patterns make like you know there's a definite shape for the, the area around the eye and, and uh, like here I put a brush stroke for uh, indicating the side of the face and, and where the mustache starts and, and so forth. So I'm looking for shapes and, and patterns of light and dark and just not, I'm, I'm letting these things lead me to the details. Like as I, as I first put in these big, big masses, right? I then, once I'm satisfied with them, I then break them down into smaller, smaller uh, um, shapes within that big shape. Like, you know, you're considering the large shape of the head, right, with the mass of hair and everything like that. And then once you, once I lock that down, right, right now I just have an indication here and there. But once I lock down the shapes, I can go inside those shapes and break them down into smaller shapes and break it down again into smaller shapes till you arrive at what will become or what people will consider detail but that is not the objective the objective is to uh, analyze the shapes and put those down and then analyze the shapes within the shapes and put that down and, and continuing to go from there okay so that's basically what I'm doing here I don't look for a lot of details I'm looking for you know it's kind of like when you see someone that you know very well at a distance 
and you can recognize the person even though you don't like you're looking at a distance so you're just looking at the the the, the way the light falls on the person's face right and you can recognize the person basically by by the the, the shapes that the that the light makes as it cascades over their face you don't see their eyes you don't see the color of their eyes you don't see their nostrils you don't see you know the, the the strands of hair or anything like that you don't see detail but you just you see something that 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 allows you to recognize who this person is from far off and that's basically what i'm trying to shoot for here you know just a, a gathering the shapes and it you can you can arrive at somewhat of a likeness it can begin to look at like the person earlier on um, but the goal is not the likeness the goal is just to uh, recognize and organize the shapes take the information that you see from your source and um, kind of not reimagine it but uh, in a sense you are reimagining it because you're deciding what you're going to leave in and what you're going to leave out like there's an incredible amount of details i'm not going to draw every whisker or every strand of hair in his beard and so forth but i'm going to give a generalized shape of all of that and that would be enough to recognize the person like i'm not into like super realistic rendering of of uh of the the the, the subject what I am into is just a, a general, I wouldn't say impressionistic, but um, still the word impression does come up. Just a general impression of what I see. Um, and it's kind of like a, a what they would call uh, alaprima thinking, like the alaprima method of uh, the meaning of the word alaprima means all at once. It's like allowing the painting to develop all at once. Um, so I'm, I'm looking for uh, just a way of developing this all at once and by doing by um, hitting these big areas or these patterns of light and dark and generalizing in that way I can get to the particulars and um, and come to a finish without involving all the details now that involves uh, hopefully you know a, a little flourish with the brush um uh it just depends on on you know how confident i am and how confident uh and how um how well i've developed all of this from the beginning one of the things to also do is while you're working on whatever surface you're working on right is to consider that paper or that board or whatever it is like a place where you organize your your information you're looking at your reference or you're looking at the model and then you look at your page and taking the information that you see and basically organizing it on this uh, um, this surface so it's a place where you're kind of taking notes so you know you're looking at the um, at the 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 surface that you're working on as a place where you can uh, basically or like I said organize what you're what you're looking at and take notes on what you believe is the important thing first so you describe you're describing what you see in your visual language Since I'm working in black and white, in grays, one of the things to consider is while I'm not considering color, I'm considering the values. So I'm working within a value scale and I want to keep that value scale simple. So you got white and black and three grays and I'm going to do my best to, stri to strive to stay within those three grays and not to kind of veer off too much from that because the simpler the better the easier it is to read and um and then i'm you know what i'm going to do is basically work between those three grays 
and and build up my my uh, painting based on that what I'm going to do is essentially I'm going to work in those three values and leave the darkest dark which would be the black and the lightest light which would be the white for much later on in the painting more like just accents when I'm finishing the painting that's when that comes in but I want to develop slowly this painting within those um, three values first and you can totally make a painting with just those three values and then use the lightest light the white and the darkest dark black to enhance or, or just create accents to enhance the picture and so if you can just hold off on that till the very end it will it would help in developing the picture or developing the the the, the um, painting into in you know in in just organizing those three values it will help to keep it simple and it'll help to uh, really finish the painting and then all you're doing after that is just adding those accents for flourishes or whatever they, they, they're, they're definitely more than that but they're not the most important thing that's unifying the picture what's unifying the picture is those uh, three core values thinking this way of just those values would help to organize this thing much easier and one of the things about gouache gouache is a challenge already uh, one of the challenges about gouache is that when you put the painting down it's wet and so it looks darker because it's reflecting the light being that it's wet there's more reflection and then as it dries that goes out of it and it dries lighter and duller so when you put it down you got to be patient with it because you got to understand that it's going to take a while it's going to take a few minutes before you actually see what what is the color that you put down so gouache takes a lot of practice a lot of patience uh, it's not that um, what you put down is exactly what you get uh, something like oils or, or acrylics would give you that but gouache takes a little strategy a little planning and it takes a little getting used to but it's a very good medium to work with in terms of once you get that down in terms of uh, doing simple things like this doing them quickly and you don't need, need a lot of solvents or anything else to work with it and uh, um, and then it doesn't have the uh, the, 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 the with every medium there, there, there are drawbacks like acrylics you can sure you can work with, without worrying about when it dries it's going to look different but the problem is that the acrylics also dry very quickly and um, and gouache on the other hand kind of never dries it, it does dry but you can always reactivate gouache you can reactivate it uh, a day later hours later a year later years later it doesn't matter you can continue to work on gouache and improve upon your drawing or make changes and reactivate the paint that's there by just adding water to it whereas something like acrylic once it's dry it's dry same thing with oils it's once it's dry it's dry with the uh, um, with gouache that's not the same thing and you don't have to worry about things like if you if you paint with uh, transparent watercolor you don't have to worry about overworking certain areas or, or you know it, it's uh, you don't have to worry about it, just the, 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 the paint quality in terms of you know how it dries uh, and leaves rings and stuff like that because gouache pretty much is more similar to oils or acrylic in that way in that you can you know it's it's uh, an opaque medium where you can paint on top of things and um, and not you know uh, not affect the color underneath it in terms of uh, um, if you want to cover something so it takes a little getting used to and working this way with organizing your values and thinking about your values ahead of time you're going to uh, you, you strategize to save yourself a lot of uh, trouble 
a lot of and and just head off uh, making head off uh, um, just uh, coming to a finish too quickly, I guess. Uh, I don't know how to put that one, but you know what the the thing is, it's easier to organize when you're thinking this way, and especially when you have a medium that challenging like wash. But at the same time, you you there you know you can use gouache because of the benefits of it. That is, you know, not having to worry about the drying time and so forth. Another thing to consider when you're working like this, where you're trying to keep it as simple as possible, and especially when you're working towards just using the big shapes. Like if you look at the how I'm painting the nose right now. It's a very simple blocked in uh, pattern of uh, lights and dark, right? So I got one gray for the light and one gray for the dark and that's it. So I don't do much in regards to uh, putting in a lot of detail. What that helps too is also helps me to decide the detail that I'm going to put in and the detail that I'm going to leave out because you don't want to just say it, slavishly copy the photo because for that you already have the photo and what's the point of it so what you're doing really is you're editing that photo you're editing it and you're re you're you're telling somebody else about this great photo or this great face that you've seen say it's not a photo say you're working from life so you're telling you're trying to show somebody why this is interesting to you so when you're telling somebody something like verbally you're not going over every single detail you're not crossing every T and dotting every I because you will lose that person's attention over time right so the same thing when you paint this is your visual language and your opportunity to tell somebody what it is that you found interesting about the object that you were viewing and so you're you're not trying to cross every T or dot every I but you're trying to relate to the person those things that you saw that were important and chances are they won't be everything and like I'm not looking to draw every strand of hair as I mentioned before every whisker you know I'm not looking to do all of that what I am looking to do is to take the shapes that I see and put down why these shapes are interesting to me and organize that shape those shapes so that they show this man's face right so that in that way I'm showing you why this painting or this this uh, why this uh, object was interesting enough for me to paint so it's not involving everything, but it's kind of like a shorthand, just telling you, hey, look, the, these are the important things. And this is what I see. And this is what, you know, what uh, um, caught my eye, right? So, and a lot of painting, like, you know, you gotta, like, painting is going on long before us, right? And there are museums filled with paintings, and sometimes, like we get books or magazines that have paintings in them or about art and so forth but nothing is like actually going to see the actual painting so if there's a museum or a gallery near you I would take the time to visit and look at the paintings that you see on those walls and you can learn a lot more from the, looking at those paintings than you can from looking at paintings in a book or looking at paintings online I mean, you can learn, you can read and, and I guess listen to, 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 to something to give you information, background, but as an artist, you're thinking visually. So you're not thinking about so much about uh, the history of the painting. That may, that, that may and for me it does uh, um, sound intriguing and, 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 and I do like to, to learn about the history of things. But beyond that, and even before that, what I, I'm examining the painting to see how the artist did what they did. And so that I can learn from what they did because I obviously I'm in front of the painting and there's something that I like about the painting. So what can I learn about it? 
and um, bring to my painting, right? So, you know, when when you're you, when you uh, spend time at a museum or at, at the um, at the gallery, don't just admire the painting; learn from it. Learn what can you what what can you glean from it and add to your own visual language, which is what the artist gave you over periods of time, whether it's Rembrandt or Velasquez as a sergeant or, you know, whatever painter that you uh, gravitate towards, you know, over the, this, over the, 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 the passing of time, the painting has come down to us and gives us an idea of what the artist was thinking, uh, what he was doing. If we want to look at it uh, long enough so that we can learn from it and study it, and, and um, add that to to our own visual language, and that's what you're doing. You're you're telling somebody that this is interesting, and you what you what you're doing on your surface is you're using it as a notebook to to jot down these things, which uh, which to you. Uh, the most important thing about the experience of what you have viewed. Technique wise, if uh, you've been viewing this painting and viewing how I put down the brush strokes, you can see that at times the paint looks a bit dark or a bit light. And what happens is when the, when the uh, surface absorbs the water and the water in the paint dries, it dries again lighter, so uh, if you you can see that in action as I'm painting. So I haven't gone to my darkest darks or lightest lights yet. It may seem that way, but I'm trying to anticipate how the paint behaves. I'm trying to anticipate that this paint is going to dry a little lighter than what I put it down. So I I need to grow go a little bit bold. And put put it down darker or lighter than what I expect. And if it comes out too dark or too light, you can always add water and just kind of like uh, bring it down a bit with just water. You know, you can you, water is an important part of this because especially as you have a, a buildup of paint on the surface. Once you have a buildup of paint on the surface, you can start with you can you can continue with just the paint is on there like you don't have to go to your palette as often to get paint you can push the paint around by just adding water to it like i said gouache after it dries is easily reactivated and that but adding the water helps when there's a good amount of paint on the surface not when there's like a thin wash of paint so over time as you're working on this and it is building up you will see that you'll be able to manipulate the paint with just water. And then there's several brush strokes that I, that, that I use. Um, one of the things that helps is using a dry brush stroke. Like when I want to put a certain detail in and I want it to look crisp and, uh, um, and try to not let it meld too much with the paint that's underneath it because that's one once you have a buildup of paint and you start putting paint on top of that it gets absorbed into the paint underneath it and that's part of the fight you know you got to fight to keep it so that uh, the the new paint is visible and doesn't just get absorbed so when you do a a dry brush and by dry brush kind of like what I'm doing now by dry brush is I mean you have more pigment on the brush than you dab water and so you're like kind of like uh, brushing it over the surface and it's it's dragging over the surface it's, it's not going as smooth but in this way like I said less of it gets absorbed with the paint underneath and at the same time it gives a texture and at the same time you you can you can uh, draw pretty much like that it takes a little bit of patience because obviously since the brush is dragging on the surface it's it, um, it it's dragging and it's slowing you down a bit 
And so it takes a little bit of patience to do these types of brush strokes. They work very well for textures in the hair and so forth, uh, the beard, the mustache. Uh, they also work well like the eyebrows and, you know, just anywhere where you need an accent that, um, that doesn't necessarily get absorbed into the painting underneath as much as a, um, a brush with uh, uh, equal amounts of water and equal amounts of paint, right? So you want to you want to put uh, um, paint on your brush and put enough of it so that it's less water and more paint, and then you're able to drag it. It'd be easier to draw, and uh, um, and and uh, apply it and and make textures from it and apply it to your painting. So right now, what I'm doing basically is I'm refining the painting, uh, refining the shapes, adding little details here and there uh, with these this uh, dry brush technique, right? But basically, it's uh, it's it's just refining things because once you have those big shapes there, what you're doing is you're moving it around, you're 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 uh, you're refining that shape. And then you're able to work into that shape like you can see that without look looking at it as detail what I did was I placed the eyes and in into the the big shape I initially made for where the eyes go and I was just looking at the pattern of of light and dark and within the dark of the eyes I placed in the eye I, I you know didn't place in the eye but I looked for the shapes within it to, to uh, and basically when I looked for those shapes, they reveal the eye. So I'm not looking to draw an eye, I'm looking to paint the eye in by f uh, finding the big shape and then breaking that big shape down into smaller shapes. And then it be eventually that eye will reveal itself same thing with the nose or with anything else any other part of this that i'm working on you look at the glass something as simple as the glasses so i'm it, it's simple because it's these two uh big shapes that represent the lenses right the the, the uh, but then within that i can break up the shapes and, and and i'm not paying a lot of attention to it because it's a detail that i don't necessarily need uh, I just needed to read his glasses. I don't need to detail the glasses because I'm just giving an indication that those glasses are on top of his head. And I'm just indicating it. I'm not rendering it. So I'm going to speed up this in order to get to the point because, like I said, this is all about refinement. So I'm going to speed this up in order to get to the point where I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm Past working with just those three values, and I'm I'm going more for the, the 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 final finish of the painting. So I'm finally at the point where I can begin to think about the extreme lights and darks. I'm still refining the you know refining the painting by using the other values, but I'm not afraid at this point to kind of close things out or to add the the accents and when I'm using the the uh, the extreme lights and darks right at this point where I can decide where to place them one of the things is that you can't go crazy it's only accents here and there you can't use it to kind of uh, over uh, go over the entire painting with lights and darks. So these are just, I don't know, you can call them flourishes. I think accents is a better term to use regarding the regarding the, the use of um, the darkest dark and the lightest light because obviously it's not all over the place. But you got to figure out where to place them strategically. So, and then, you know what, one of the things also when you consider working from photographs is that a photograph will tend to make things too dark in the areas like there, there are other things that uh, um, like when you're working from life 
that you can pick up on. There's nothing that's like so totally black that there aren't things within that, like different uh, um, different modulations, different uh, grays and so forth, uh, reflected light, and different things that you can include in your painting that will enhance it. At the same time, those things can be a distraction because you want to simplify your painting. Like I said, you're not crossing every T and dotting every I, but you're giving a general statement of, of the things that you see, or you're describing the things that you found the most important and the most interesting about what it is that you, uh, that, that, that you saw in the subject that made you want to paint it. So uh, that is what I'm trying to describe here. Like for me, the patterns, I, I love the patterns of light and dark, and I, I like the look on the man's face uh, in terms of his, that reveals something about his character. Uh, it's just a, a look that makes him look alive, you know. And uh, it, like there, there's a person there. And, it's, and uh, I want to make a painting where it's just not a representation of a face or an accurate drawing or a painting of a face but there's a character there and that, that I want that to come across because I believe those are the things that make it interesting so that's the kind of thing that is kind of like hard to to picture what that is like what makes this person a person what make what gives him a, a certain character and you don't find that in the details you find that in the I guess the, the accumulation of details like uh, it's it's uh, um, it, it's the sum of all these parts but all these parts within their place like there's some that you emphasize some that you de-emphasize some that you you make to sp you know you make to speak before other things and I I, I don't know if that's uh, um, if that's a good enough explanation, but it's kind of like you have choices. You you know, if you put down everything, all you're doing is copying the painting. If you put down what's most important, then to you, then you're giving uh, uh, you're giving a description that only you can give. And uh, you know, you got to make sure that you're not you 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 emphasize the things that are important because everything can't be important. I remember my instructor in, in art school, what he said this is kind of liken it to a play where you have all these different actors and they're in the play and all of them are yelling out their lines. And that will get confusing because you don't know who to pay attention to and you don't know the flow of the story because if every line is important, then you don't know which is the most important one. You don't know who is the most important character. You don't know who the story is about because everybody has that same importance and in that way you organize your painting in the same way and that you decide what's the most important thing you know you decide so that not everything is screaming out at you at once and that's why you know working in grays in in, in these values is is a good good uh, uh, exercise because you're, you're organizing your values so that it reads well. And so I decided that within a certain uh, value range is what I'm going to work in. And so I, I try my best not to veer from that value range. One, it helps keep the painting simple. And no matter how complex it gets in terms of details, you know, strands of hair, so forth, I'm, I'm keeping it to, to, to simple values so that you're just reading it with just these these uh, um, three values and then white and black, right? And even when I say white and black, I don't believe that I go all the way either one, unless maybe for like a highlight on the nose will be totally white. Maybe the, the, the pupil of the eye, if I want to put that in, will be totally black. But other than that, on the face, you see, I, I kind of restrain myself. I, I'm just, I'm just using that black to make that gray darker, and so you can read that as a as a black, 
or you know but actually is just a dark gray and same thing the, the reverse with the white in terms of I'm using the, 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 the gray and adding white to it to give you a very very light gray they can read as a white but it's not exactly white so I'm staying within that value range and try not to veer too far from it to keep the language simple and to keep my explanation of what I'm seeing simple so that people can read it a lot easier. Now before I go any further and I realize I'm very far into this video before I'm even mentioning this I just want to thank you for for watching this video and if you've hung out with me for this long I want to thank you for for, for that. Uh, this has been a fun painting to do it, and I, I was looking forward to posting this because I really do think that this uh, this was a, um, a great just a, a great lesson here in regards to using the values and thinking of mass and so forth but apart from all of that I, I want to encourage you if you like this uh, I share it with someone who you think would like or, or, or this type of video or can learn from this type of video and um, if you like it also indicating by hitting the like button and you know just giving me a thumbs up on this video that would just be great and helpful I know this is YouTube and everybody says that and it is helpful in um, helping it uh, spread and, and uh, go far and that that helps me out so if this if you've been entertained by this and you just want to reward me in any way it's real simply you can just hit the like button and if you haven't done so you can also subscribe for more videos like this so I definitely will be posting videos here on Tuesdays and so you can come back every Tuesday or you know anytime after that for a new video but apart from that getting back to this painting right here um, pretty much this painting is done it is finito there's just one thing really important that I need to do and that is add a, a background but apart from that like right here what I'm doing is I am just refine continue to refine it this is like the point where it just gets easy you can just kind of lay back you know at one at one level you hope you don't screw it up beyond this point at the other level you hope that uh, um, you know you hope that you can enhance it by just whatever you add to it at this point and like I said you know I'm going all out in in um, using my lightest light and darkest dark without any fear at this point just making sure that I don't overdo it with that and that I can you know because it can give it can be tempting to you know to want to do that because when you add accents it looks so cool you know it just looks so um, delicious in a sense and you just want to keep adding more but um, you know that, that that phrase less is more well I, it really works for this where you know what you're not overdoing it when when it comes to this so um, when it comes to adding the accents so you know just uh, take your time enjoy it at this point which is what I'm doing right now I'm just enjoying the um, the, 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 the the finish to this painting and uh, and just adding whatever flourishes or whatever accents I need to in order to um, enhance it so that there, there's not a lot really to go on from here as far as the finish like I said I do need to put in the background so I'm going to I'm going to speed up to get to that background and um, and and, and uh, show you what I did with that because I believe it's important and at this point like I said only thing that's happening here are the accents right the, the, the finishes the refinement but basically this painting is done this painting is, is finito you know except for like uh, like I said the background okay so here it is where I've gotten to the part where I'm going to add the background and uh, you know to me this is a very important some people actually add a background at the very very beginning of working on whatever it is that they're working on you know their, their subject I 
you know, can I sometimes do that? I think it's a great practice, and I sometimes do that. Um, other times I do like what I'm doing here, and I'm doing it towards the end, and I'm choosing a value within that same value range that I feel would help make the figure pop out. There's two reasons I want to place a background. One, to uh, help the, the, the image to pop out more and two to give atmosphere to give a certain uh, space to, to, to see that it exists in, in a certain space there are times where I just leave the white it just depends on what I'm doing and I guess because I was so happy with this painting that I wanted to go beyond that and, and then uh, make it more than just uh, um, one of those quick studies I wanted to you know make it look very very presentable so I wanted it to exist within a space and kind of make it a more of a fuller image you know because the background is part of the painting it's not separate from it if you leave it out what you have is more of a graphic image more of a, a you know it, it might have volume the subject might have volume but the, 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 the whiteness of the paper just flattens it out here, the you know the, the the background helps it to exist in the space, and it helps it pop out, which is not hard for this painting, because you know he's surrounded by the dark hair that he has around him, right? And so, as long as the background isn't melding into his shirt, you know it helps it to pop out. You know it, it's it, it's very easy to make this figure pop out. But uh, again, it, it also like the idea that it gives it atmosphere and it allows the, um, the painting to exist within a, a certain space. So, but that is pretty much it for this video. You know, I really enjoyed making this. I really enjoyed uh, um, doing this painting. And, uh, you know, I, I got to remember to leave the link for Earth's World. The guy is great at sharing his resources and it's a good resource for artists to use to practice and to you know to, to, to uh, as they say as the young people say to level up right but um but yeah it's a, i mean the guy shares his his photos and and uh he he uh he even likes when artists do use them and post them and he he has a, a a separate folder on his site of uh different uh pieces where artists have used his reference and posted them and the guy is great about that it's great that someone's out there uh sharing you know what it is that they do but if you made it this far thank you thank you for watching my video it's in its entirety and uh, if, you, if it's helpful and you liked it, there's a few things that you can do. One, you can, you can uh, like it by hitting the thumbs up button. You can subscribe because, as I said, I will be here every Tuesday. And um, as well as you can share it, you know, with a friend, someone who's interested in art and so forth. But uh, thank you. Thank you for following along. Thank you for making it this far. And as I said, I will be here again every Tuesday posting a video. And uh, so uh, join me every Tuesday, all right? And uh, I will see you guys then. Bye-bye.